Do my fire burning red in a jersey I represent, you know, for comes hard here, you know. Big up Kidaki, Buxton Massive. Hey, Babylon boy, you're going like, you know, like, come son. Red. Comes out of your son. You burn this wine when no wire shine. The tree of life, them no wire climb, cause them art no kind. Comes, I said, them art no kind. Buxton Massive. Kidaki. Red that.
stop fooling people. You promoting people. Stop lying to the people. You are a part of the cycle. I say, Guyanese morning time. The people calling Guyanese morning time. Rhythm, rhythm, Guyanese morning time. Intelligence and knowledge run the front line. We go again, Guyanese morning time. The people calling Guyanese morning time. Rhythm, rhythm, Guyanese morning time. Intelligence and knowledge run the front line. We go again, we got break for Bark and Mark Bench Cup. David Hines and Kadaki Amsterdam, Sherrod Duncan, Nigel London, Normal Brown and Gavin Machos, Big Up Pass, poor People Governor, Simona Brooms, Robin Simpson, Hampton Green and Winston Jordan, and yes we can go right on and on, Guyanese morning time. The people calling Guyanese morning time. Rhythm, rhythm, Guyanese morning time. Intelligence and knowledge run the front line. We go again, Guyanese morning time. The people calling Guyanese morning time. Rhythm, rhythm, Guyanese morning time. Intelligence and knowledge run the front line. We go again. The relatives and friends of young Quinn and Bacchus, they deserve justice. The family, the relatives and friends of our in Boston, they deserve justice. The family, the relatives and friends of Peter Headley, they deserve justice. And so when we say that Guyana is a part of the state, we have the evidence to show. Hey fans, it's karaoke and oldies night this and every Thursday at Club Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton. Dance to the magical songs of yesteryear by popular DJs and Cam's Audio. Admission is free. Come out, let's make memories at Club Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton North. You can get meat anywhere, but for the best cuts of chicken, beef, pork, mutton, and lots more, check out T and W Harris Butcher Shop located in the East Rimevelt Market Meat Section. Call us on 609-7168-641-4494. Ask for Rastaman. T and W Harris Butcher Shop for the best in fresh cut meats and lots more. Behaving like them ain't got no feelings. This right done coming there done. But me slippers still up on the ground. We come far now, we ain't backing down. Thank you. 
you will be an here and hello how you do and when you are in close proximity of your enemy any little kindergarten child is going to say eh, eh, something is wrong here and those are the people they are promoting we don't want snakes as leaders we want upright people you know right now mr mr norton has Morning, neighbor, morning. Are you morning? Morning, are you morning? It's 7 30, 7 23 minutes to the 8 o'clock hour on the 22nd day of March in the year 2024. Welcome to the program. How are you being? How was yesterday? How was last night? Thursday night usually is hectic, don't work at club twilight. I don't know what you do on Thursday nights, but how was last night? How you make out? Wake up this morning. How are you feeling? Are you feeling energized? Are you feeling like you know, um, like at last you can hold up the world? Are you feeling that there's need for some definite change? Um, in this country, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Um, is which college guy so you sing a feeling hot, hot, hot people in the party feeling hot. Martin, that's not my choice of career, so you have to forgive me. I don't know the thing. I can repeat words. I tried to find a rhythm. I got two left foot and so on and so forth. So, yeah, don't worry me. Esi Kibana asking, uh, what is the topic for today? It's Free Talk Friday, man. Today is Free Talk Friday. The lines are open. <laughs> the lines are open. If you didn't get your chance to talk yesterday, you get your chance to talk now. The lines are open. 6225933 is the number to call. It's Free Talk Friday. Yeah, man, that's all I like. And the word go, the depot of me. I see somebody near Love Life was calling me this morning. I want to know what Love Life called me so early for. <laughs> Call your life, good morning. When I see Love yes, Life, I just run. <laughs> <laughs> Call your life, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I know. I had I had my app open up, and I said, "Man, you know, I, I got to catch catch it from the beginning this morning." You know. So uh, anyway, good morning, Mr. Amsterdam, and good morning, everyone. The guy in these diaspora. Good morning, our guy in these. I like your shirt, by the way. I get your color this shirt, story, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, but I got to recognize. It. You give credit, give credit. I'm gonna send out the shirt. Thanks for the shirt today. Go ahead. Yes. So, um, I just want to touch on something someone said yesterday about Comrade Norton's uh, leadership. Um, whoever is going to fill the spot, let me recommend this. If someone is desirous of replacing Comrade Norton as the leader of the PNC, and subsequently, I guess, of the opposition, but let me say of the PNC, then that person would, given the crisis that we're de dealing with now, dealing, dealing with notwithstanding what happened with President Granger and uh, what has happened thus far under Comrade Norton, that candidate would need to come and tell us what he or she is going to do. Don't believe you're just going to run up and run in the same old campaign. Father, Norton told us what he was going enough. to do, didn't he? No, not Norton. I'm saying no, the no, new no, candidate. No, Father, just ask that, 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 you have to defend him, man. Ask your question. Didn't Norton tell us what he oh, was yeah. going to do? Yes, Good. Has he done it? Exactly. That's no, the no, point. I, yeah, no, it That's can't be point. exactly. I'm asking you a question. You're not answering the question. Has he done what he no, said he was he, going to no, do? No, 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 Good. he hasn't done it. So what guarantees you have that the next person tells you what they will do, will, they, will, will do it or get it done? Well, exactly. Thank you for helping me out make the point even better. Proceed. Exactly. So, Talk is cheap. Now, <laughs> so, yes. So that person would need to tell us and then it would put Cumber Norton on his toes. That he's got to do better. See, that's the whole thing about accountability. Accountability is not only to put blame. Accountability says, how are you going to be accountable to what you promised you will do? And how are you going to be accountable to achieving successful results? See, that's accountability as well. So how is the new candidate going to be accountable 
And as well, how is Comrade Norton going to say definitively? Because this time we shine, Comrade Norton, or we shine, candidates. And look, we want the best horse in the race. We don't want a three-legged horse in a four-legged horse race. Okay? So we want the best that our votes deserve. That's what we're saying here. Okay. So we don't want to throw out the country and get rid of what we have just to end up with the same thing we had. Right? We ain't trying to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, ended up with the same situation that we run away from. And the person ain't trying to tell us definitively what they're going to do. And the person in the seat, we don't want to get rid of him either if we can't find a better and a more guaranteed candidate. So now there should be some process by where a candidate has to tell us because a candidate has to have a manifesto. You see, so we're looking at the manifesto and we holding candidates to their word. See, that that should be some expectation for that to happen. Hang on, come on, gaffers. So I just want to put that on the table. Reparations. I noticed uh actor had a Zoom conference on reparations. And I did notice that the uh I think this is a president. Um, or the chairperson of ACTA, Mr. Uh, Eric Phillips, spoke on Politics 101 as well. And he basically covered the same topics on both sessions. One of the key things that jumped out to me was that he said that Irfan Ali, a PPP, an East Indian, descendants of indentured laborers from India is heading up CARICOM's reparations advocacy seat. I'm paraphrasing. But he's heading up the reparations agenda for CARICOM. Together with Santoki, and I think Mia Motley is uh, in and around there. Now, first of all, why would I want someone who doesn't like African Guyanese based upon his, his conduct in every African Guyanese village? And based upon a person who could not respect the Constitution that he's sworn to uphold. And why would I even want him to be administrating anything for reparations? And to show how e un uneven and how disingenuous he is, he is trying to drag reparations into an indentured ship discussion. And Mr. Aaron Phillips had to point it out with this brilliant letter. I'm glad he did that. So to begin with, we don't need Irfan Ali there. And, and this is our reparations. I don't know since when we asked Brother Mongoose to speak for the chickens. Right? So that can't fly. And we should work to get rid of that. And I'm glad that actor brought it up. But however, Mr. Eric Phillips, you know, there is something that occurred and we just can't understand how it occurred, Brother Eric. I say, Brother Eric, because you are my brother in the struggle. I might not, I might not agree with everything, but you, we are brothers in the struggle. You know, we don't agree that states are the advocators for reparation. States have no business advocating for reparations. I don't know how that happened. I mean, Mr. Eric Cripps could explain to the House how that happened. States, whether it's Barbados, whether it's Suriname, have no business in reparations. States don't give two hoots about reparations. It's, it, 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 they don't sync together. States have no 
interest in reparations. If state of Guyana had an interest in reparations, they would set the reparations tomorrow. And for Ali, if he was interested in reparations, he would not have to go to the United Nations to act about reparations. That's hypocritical. That's disingenuous to begin with. Okay? If you are and being that you're an installed president, you don't got to go ask for reparations. Pass the reparations bill tomorrow. Sit down with, with the AFNU and pass reparations bill for Guyana. But you won't do that. But you're making a clown of yourself and you're, you're, you're making mockery of reparations by going to the United Nations and pontificating, pretending that you are genuine about reparations. So the PPP can pass reparations bill or sit with the opposition and talk about it. But they won't. Well, let's get back to it. In the United States, no one is asking the government to sit and receive monies for reparations. Hello? No one is asking the American government to sit and, 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 and uh, be the recipient of reparations. There are local bodies by the people trusts organizations that are setting up that for reparations but only in guyana or in the caribbean you've got these leaders like mia motley who's a crook Mia motley is working with core groups and she's doing a whole lot of underhanded business that's my opinion so we find out around the caribbean ralph gonzalez all of these people disingenuous people are lining up to fleece reparations, just the way the PPP are fleecing the oil monies that are coming for the oil in Guyana. So I just want to point that out. And uh, I said, that's the East Indians. East Indians suffered many things. They suffered persecution on the caste in India, under the British. I believe they have a right to ask the British for reparations based upon the caste system that was constitutionalized in India. So they have a constitutional in issue in India. And their finale, I believe, has a reparations issue in India. All the time. Because his ancestors... Time up, Mr. Amsterdam. Wrap up, please. Okay, sure. In India, they have an argument for East Indies in India under the British. I agree with that totally. With regards to Guyana, East Indians came on a contract. Africans came, they were kidnapped. East Indians came on the contract and they broke their contract. They chose to stay. They broke their contract. And that's a point other persons didn't make. You made a contract, you broke the contract. Now you want to claim reparations in Guyana. You got an issue with Great Britain. For them putting you in a contract in India. So you deal with a contract in India with the Indian government and the British who colluded to put you under subjugation in their contract. Don't come to Guyana and try to do in Guyana what you need to be doing in India. Once again, thank you for accepting my call. Good morning again. Thank you for your call. Please, um, morning, your friend. How are you doing? It's not nice here, girl. Let's say you left me. Um, how are you doing? It's free talk Friday today. For those who are now joining us, so um, the floor is usually the, the microphones are open for you to raise your issues. Just be conscientious of time, be considerate, and so on and so forth. Carla, thank you for calling your life. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you and all my black brothers and sisters in Guyana. Happy Friday. Help is on the way, flag God. And I always believe in those words. But we have to do our best and leave the rest for our opposition leader Abby Naden. Let me answer your question when you ask off your question. Are you still there? Yes, brother. Good. You know what what my leader Abby Naden said? He will take black people out of poverty. I never heard that after born I'm dead from Desmond Prasad and Mr. Granger Prasad. But Abby Naden said Abby Naden said from day one he will put back free education, what born and build a foundation and left for all Guyanese. 
from day one from A to Z. I be not said you will not stand by and allow that wicked demon Jadu that all France Garden could do because I'm not in Guyana for bossy head. But to tell him playing at France Garden, he banned, he banned night, but he banned last night. That he will not sit by and let Jadu take over all the towns and, and, and control Guyana and black man. That is the word where Abi Nati said. So why we must not rally until the brother who challenged Charles Garden yesterday? Did you see the response when you finished talking your nonsense? People called and said, clear with Abi Nati. What's wrong with you guys? Who do we have to replace Abi Nati right now? And Coffee said, they got to come and tell we what they will do. The government start act physically on the street by protest and shut down business. That, that they have a proof to flat garden. But yet still, I cannot run away from God's words. God said, Abi Nathan is the next president. Abi Nathan writes for said he will be the next president. Did any one of you observe John Dio press conference? You all see on Zagio wall what he established? Maybe it's a campaign. Picture that now. You know what Zagio said again yesterday? we going to win the next election. The fat president said earlier that 2027, then he would give black, black teacher, black man money. <laughs> but the second point this morning, what Jack Joe said, what nobody pay no mind, but Frank Gandhi pay mind. Jack Joe said clear yesterday for the press conference that we will we will win it win the next election. And people from other party just call him and tell him and tell him. Why we know you guys guys win election? We lost election. Let me read the fine print. It's people from PNC party, people from AFC party, I can't like, give out information to that new them. It's plain words, Father God, you fight for target. That's why God spit out Bordam for the law to show us who are there in PNC camp. Wolf in sheep clothing. Them MP in PNC. Are you be careful because as God you make are you end up like Simon Das? And you see the same come back to Ramvatan. Why you believe Greenville did not want to Ramvatan for be the Prime Minister? Check back the video them. Ramvatan and Greenzel never campaign all around. Like how he and Mr. Nagamutu campaign. Because you know. That that man no one that time is a wolf in 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 sheep clothing. He hide the secret. What kind of secret flag God? Talk to me this morning. The secret when Shawada said he, he cannot take the job because he get carried and citizen. Why one that time did not take that secret to his boss to the job? I let go up no, put a, a, a punch in that. I said right away. Mm -mm. A early meeting. We got to start to say no. Ramzatan is not to be trusted. I'm, I'm saying this over and over. And I think the point has been made, Carlo. Okay, good. One more thing before, before we go. Coffee, you was a point there, I believe it was yesterday, concerning about the Speaker of the House. I talk about it all the time. The Speaker of the House make an error and get us in this nonsense today concerning the mo the no confidence motion. I can remember Basil Williams went back and tell the speaker that this cannot be passed and Basil Williams show him evidence and he refused. He said no. Every time black men said no who up there in, in office, black man got no no black man got to suffer. Why we black people cannot be benefit from our vote? Why our vote have to go to them wicked people to be benefited of? 
Thank you for your time and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for your call. Good. Thank you for your call. Y'all comment me now. Let me let me run my mouth a little bit. I'll give me a few minutes. I'll, I'll open back the lines just now. I like every morning, once Mia's name gets mentioned in this program, Carl Best jumps in. And he say, y'all mad. Y'all have me living y'all head with free wind. Barbados love me up. Since me a term president, not um prime minister, not a woman was killing Barbados and so and so and so and so. And like the PPP asks you, produce the evidence of these things you're saying about me. Why do you think they got investigators? Why do you think they got the CIA, the FBI, the Scotland Yard? I um, mean, they got the CIA, they got so cool and so on and so forth. Evidence is not always to put your hand on. Sometimes you got to dig deep. You got to go to dark places to evidence. But in many instances, you can conclude and you can conclude almost safely what people are about based on their actions. Everywhere you see them, you see Ralph, you see Mia, you see <laughs> Ali. Three musketeers. We know, I personally know, of Mia's role in impacting, influencing regime change in Ghana in the last elections. I can tell you that. The woman who headed the team and prepared the report on those elections was a selectee of Mia. She had her instructions. Some of us know what those instructions were. Some of us were privy to the report that she presented. So, Carl Bess, um, <laughs> many of us, when we say, and, and I, if you notice, I don't comment on Mia. Because Mia comes across as a typical old slave to me, and I'm being very frank. Um, those of you who will remember me addressing Mia for the very first time, I must find that letter. I don't know where it is, but I must find it. Everybody wanted to share that, that letter in their media houses. Everybody wanted to use that letter as an example of what a good response was. I don't discuss me. Me as a demon. <laughs> Some people might say confused. But Mia is a typical Uncle Tom. You sell the others for your own comfort. That's what you saw on the plantation. The Uncle Toms, the old slaves, used to go among the field slaves and listen to them and their plans, and then they take it back to the slave table, the master's table. That's me, and I have no apologies to make for that harvest. The evidence shows me a gang up against the Granger government and instituted regime change. I was in those recon stations. I personally called on Mia's representative several times to produce uh, to provide evidence in those recon stations. A region region seven box being counted among region four results. Another region's ballot found in, in, in region four boxes and stuff like that. Those things, in many instances, did not find themselves in the report. So I know who Mia is. I've had my assessment of Mia. Mia and the Ghana Venezuela border controversy. Mia basically took the side of Venezuela. She embraced Venezuela. Sometimes you can't be angry with leaders or people call themselves as leaders for wanting the best for their people. 
But sometimes a lot of them are myopic because in this instance, she wants the best for her people. She wants the best for Bajans. But what about the Afro community? What about the way she has dealt with um, the Haitian issue? And those are people too. The afro guyanese who are suffering because of regime change and so on in this society. And those are people too. Doesn't she see the, the, the wrongs of the PPP to speak out of, uh, uh, against it? But everywhere you see her, she is up close and personal with Ali. It therefore means she must have some influence on Ali. Why not influence the idiot to do something better than he is doing for her people? Right? So, um, Carl Best, I, I, I'm at odds with you this morning. I've never addressed you. I don't think I've ever addressed you on this mere issue. Right? We have our opinions on, of, of, of me and we got a right because we are seeing our actions. She is inimical to the black cause. I don't care who say what. But let us talk about her presence. You don't take me out this morning. Right? Don't take me out this morning. I'll make a call you them names that you don't like. What was free and fear? If you ask me quite frankly, <laughs> I don't have this question about the free and fair election. Whether it was under the PNC or the PPP, I don't know if this country has ever seen the light of a free and fair election. I said it yesterday, but maybe people didn't hear me. I am saying that Ghana is just another colony. It used to be a colony of the Brits. It is now a colony of the Brits and Americans and Canadians and everybody. Everybody comes here to extract wealth for development of their country. And the Ghanaian government is a puppet. It has, it has always been. And will forever be, as far as I'm concerned, puppets. These elections have always been influenced by ex ex external forces. 1996 or whatever, Jimmy Carter put the PPP in government. Twenty twenty, Trump put the PPP in government. Who knows? Perhaps maybe the Americans put the coalition in government. So, what are you telling me? Free fair one. An election that got that uh, where the list is bloated by over 200,000 persons could ever be free and fair when there are so many opportunities for skullduggery? Anyhow, let me talk. Let's address issues because, I mean, I like to address issues in a structured way. At least it might not appear so, but I do just that. On the reparations issue, in 2013, CARICOM established a, repar a reparation commission. The issue of reparation was being discussed um, across territories. There were several persons who were leading those discussions. Eric Phillips definitely was the man leading discussions about um, reparations in Ghana. There are other people who are involved in those dis discussions across the Caribbean territories and so on. But 2013, CARICOM said, we're going to establish a, a reparations commission. And based on my quick research, the reparation commission, the chairman is Sir Hilary Beckles. And Mia Motley, is chairman of the Prime Ministerial Subcommittee on Reparations. Ali is currently chairman of CARICOM. The chairman of any organization is usually an um, ex officio member of any committee or commission. And so I want to situate Ali's presence with Mia. And, um, well, I don't know who is Ralph Rowe. 
Kalk kızı, ele, ele tuğbe tasılı. <gülüyor> Yaga. The notorious tree. Anyways, right? So Ali Asher is an ex-officio member, I want to believe, of that reparation commission. Mir is chair of the prime ministerial subcommittee. And Hillary Beckles is chair of the commission. So those are the people I would believe who will be tasked and will be expected to speak on reparations from the point of view of CARICOM, a regional body. It does not mean, at least in my mind, it does not mean that a bona fide cultural organizations, represent, real representatives of the people, do not have the right to speak on and be upfront and personal with the reparation matter. And so I'm saying that African cultural organizations throughout the regions ought to bond themselves together. And I do believe that they did that. They bonded to discuss and, and move this reparation thing forward. And so they have to continue to lead. CARICOM has its role. CARICOM has what I would consider the political and governmental role in these discussions. Because likely when reparation funds will come, it's not going to just come and go to some organization. It must pass through some government structure. I dare say maybe a Ministry of Culture. Right? With specific instructions, I would, might, might argue, like the decade for people of African descent. You know the disaster that was under the PPP and so um, experience is supposed to teach wisdom. And so we should know that we have to be like eagles when we're talking about reparation and government's involvement. Right? But governments are the people's representatives. CARICOM is the people's representatives, regional, regional representative of the people. And I would want to believe that naturally CARICOM has some role or other to play in those discussions. My thing is, it should not be, be the only set of people talking about reparations in this country or in the region. And so those cultural organizations which have problems with the approach of CARICOM to reparations must again band themselves together and challenge CARICOM to change that approach and say, hey, 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 stick a pin. Reparations can't include Compensation for indentureship. They were compensated to start with. They came here as paid labor. So I don't care if they have a problem, if they want to fight for recompense based on their contracts. But please don't mix that fight with our fight for compensation based on our exploitation. And I think sometimes, as leaders, sometimes, um, again, let me declare, I'm not a custodian of all knowledge, wisdom, nor understanding. But I believe sometimes leadership becomes emotional, and, and, and um, we go there and we make all kinds of statements, and, and, you know, sometimes we play to the gallery. I try not to do that. Because when you play to the gallery, sometimes situations change and then your credibility gets tested. My thing is, CARICOM must have a role. Based on my understanding, Mia has a role on the CARICOM um, Reparation Commission. Hillary Beckles has a role. Ali S. Chairman has a role. And a lot of other people on that commission, whoever make, make it up, makes it up. They too would have roles. But the real bona fide cultural organizations and cultural representatives of free Africans from the plantations must have the most important role, and that is they must direct where the show is going. And so they have to hold their political representatives accountable. That's all I'm saying. 
So yes, we have to keep it in the limelight that Ali and um, me and whoever else is speaking out of terms. Then they seem to take this, um, I don't know if jewel is the correct word here. Can be jewel. When they take this um, mono approach to reparations as it relates to enslaved Africans and tying it up with reparations as it relates to indentureship, it's two different fights. It's two different yardsticks. It's two different standards. And cultural organizations and the likes of Coffee and Splash Gordon and Dr. Hines and Eric Phillips and everybody else who wants to address that must address it. And must all their political leaders, in this instance, carry come commission on reparations, accountable for their approach and challenge their approach. Get that's all I want to say on this issue. Was there a call on the line? No. I did ask um, somebody to hold the line. No. Call after I'm finished with that. There's another issue I wanted to deal with. Um, but let me take this call and we'll come back. It's free talk Friday. It's y'all Friday, man. It's love y'all to talk most. Call it like. Yes, good morning. Good morning to all the viewers and listeners. Um, Barbados. Barbados has been one of the one of the success story of post slavery, post whatever. Is it is be one of the most stable countries in the Caribbean, economically, socially, and politically, post slavery again, or po post um, actually post um, um what do you call it? imperialist. Um, and even though, even though, even though it's been so successful, it, it it only became a republic maybe a year or two ago, something like that. Why? Bar 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 Barbados, Bar Barbados actually, the, the people of Barbados, they they they, they are proud. They, they are proud. They seem to be proud. The political system has been be, 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 has been proud subjects. Of, of the monarchy over the years so 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 they, they, i don't think that they they um mere mostly sure is, is the right person to be negotiating for reparation because like i said they're still subject to, to the monarchy and they, they probably so 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 mere mostly mere mostly has no 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 place Trying, trying to be a negotiator for for reparation. She might be a good orator, but 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 I don't think she's a she's the right person to be negotiating for 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 for, no, for reparation for, for, for black people, because again, they 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 they, they, are, they are perfect house slaves, right? I I really don't want to generalize all the the, Barbados, the people of Barbados, but 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 they they're the most tame. Slaves, the most tame black folks in the in the Caribbean, they 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 look up to white people, so so I really don't think that 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 she should be in in, in that position negotiating for, for black folks in in the Caribbean as as a whole. Ken uh, Tokyo, Ken Tokyo, whatever his name is, I I don't hear, I don't know him that much, but but our 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 president, our so called president, Ifan Ali. He, he, he does not. He does not have the intellect to, to negotiate for nothing. He cannot. He cannot pronounce the word reparation properly. Must just know the meaning of it. I have a speech impediment, and I'm sure I could do way, way better than he can in, in 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 that regard. So 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 these people that that, that they have around the table trying to negotiate for us, I don't think they they, they, they suited to be there. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your call. The lines remain open. Okay. 
If not, if you want to find names of dead voters, check your body members. You can find them right there. Ask Anil for the list that he collect from GCOM. Ask him where that list is. I'm not the custodian of government information. Ask Anil. You could check with the um call a life. God bless you, my team, Mr. Kadaki. God bless the program to the rest of the guys nation and all those who are in and out of the diaspora. Bless good day to you all. Guyanese is, is amazing. I, I just want to share this with our, our people and those who I my heart is so overwhelmed. I am so happy. I'm so overjoyed. I can't say how much I thank the UN for the present in this country. I really love how the UN are troubled the water of the government. I really love how the water has been stored up and how the government they understand the reality of the truth of life, whether they're living in a coma or they're living in a tomb or something. It is not amazing to see how they become offensive and defensive, how they are exposing the truth and don't even realize they're exposing the truth. Can you imagine Mr. Jack Dio is calling to produce the people them who give the UN the, some of the report and complain? It's like telling Kanu, all them people who tell you and give about drugs, boss, let me know who report them. It's like the body who get caught up saying, tell me, tell me who report me. We were kind of stupid to that. We're in this world. And I'm um, a brother Flash. Be careful how you're trying to say, well, um, Jack Dio. That man is a big, big face, presumptuous liar. He fabricates things and he says things to get things out of people. Sometimes nobody tell that man one thing we claim and that people tell him. He's a liar. Anyhow, the UN can look and see what's going on with the Ministry of Education. They don't even have to ask nobody question. They can look and see what's going on with the union and the ministry of education and see how the ministry is lying, how the representative they are lying. And then it's amazing that Mr. Anand, Mr. Anand, the law realized that these bodies are supposed to be independent bodies. Do you, do you know that the bodies are supposed to be independent bodies? They agree with the government. But I want to know why they are not allowing them to function in the independent way they're supposed to function. And that is what is affecting them. However, Guyanese, please let us understand. We have an opportunity when the time comes for vote. And let us vote this government out. They don't have our interests at all. You can see clear. You need a, a binoculars to see that. Guyanese, we don't need binoculars to see anything like that. Look how they're treating the Venezuelan. All oh, them getting land, they're getting work. The air that the Guyanese citizen, they're getting the land. No more people complain, they pay for the land and they can't get the land. But the Venezuelan, they are getting that just because they want to vote. How much more than that? We Guyanese are going to allow ourselves to be foolish and to be brainwashed by this PPP government. I am asking all those who vote for the PPP in the past, be honest, be sincere. Be loyal in yourself and see that this government is not working for the betterment of this nation. Your children, them, they are not working in betterment for this generation. So please, when you have a vote, be honest for your own future and your own children's future. Because look at Exile Mobile, Exile Mobile, look what they do. You see, they are running against this nation and the citizen and everything. Once again, Mr. Kadaki, God bless you. God bless us. Then we're going to get there. We stay in the righteousness. But the battle is going to be easy. But well, let us continue to fight and receive the victory God has for us to enjoy the blessing of this land. Chinese, one people, one nation, one day. Have a blessed day. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your declared blessings. We all need it. The lines remain open 6025923 is the number to call. Let me revisit an issue we were talking about yesterday. Call all the line, please. Miranda yeah. Brown and education and getting higher education means you're going to get more money and so on. I made a point. I was making the point to you guys that 
sending teachers or granting teachers time out to go and get um afforded degree or go scholarship and so on and so forth. But you don't get the benefit of the employer. And the argument was being made that when they're more qualified, they will get more money. Any y'all could tell me with Saddam Hussein qualification? Saddam Hussein, the chief education officer. The man who dropped out, and I spoke about this when he was made chief education <laughs> officer. The man who dropped out from the cadet program. Quit. He didn't get the stamina to stay and complete the cadet officer's program. Despite his godfathers and godmothers in the PPP, and picked him to go on the cadet officer's program. He quit. He only returned after he became education officer. <laughs> hey, yeah. What a thing. You know what else is interesting? The Ministry of Education that has people with masters and second degree and all kind of degrees and all kind of doctorates and so on. Working on the common dunce. A man who is now doing his deped. A man who is now doing his deped is heading the Ministry of Education as a chief education officer. Combine a man who just now doing his deped as chief education officer with a dunce minister of education and tell me if it's not more disaster you can get. We see it happening every single day. And that is why I'm reminding you, action speaks louder than words. I don't care where they like to mirror and come and see. We see it happening every day and we know what we see. We are mad people. And even if we are mad, we are not institutionalized because the PPP shall don't make the models. Call it like. Hey, good morning, Kodaki. Good morning to the listening to important. Listen, I always knew that agents like Indian people, the majority of them, right? They always call them pretty here. I was in Barbados. I used to live in Barbados. I could tell you they're more adapt to, 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 to Indian people than, 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 than black people, right? If 10 Indians go to, 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 to Barbados and 10 black, men's go, black people go to Barbados, they would turn back the black people and love the Indians. Because you always you always adapt to them, right? Me, like Indian people, straight here. Me has no no right to talk about reparation for Indian people. She has no authority to talk about that. So I know what she's talking about uh, reparation. She don't know what she don't know what she's talking about. She don't know what she's talking about. And she's not only an opportunist, she is, is, is a person who gravitates to what is going on around her, right? If she could she could get something off of everything that is that, that passed around her, that is her, that is me. So she shouldn't be talking nothing but reparation, right? Nothing at all. And what the, the, the vice president, is talking about uh, you want to see these people who making these statements, right? I want to know what the ERC is doing about those things. What the ERC is doing, they, 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 one people could talk and the other people can't talk. So yeah, see, it shows it shows you that it's a waste of time in this country, right? It's a waste of time. And I glad the UN people is here to see what is going on in this country. I'm glad they they they're, they're seeing what is going on in this country and they know. So all these things they're trying to, to, to say this is not happening and this is not happening. The people knows. The people know the people who are who are studying there you know, a long time before they came here. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. <laughs> the behavior of Jagio just um reinforces why Guyanese don't have trust in the local institutions. Because 
those kind of complaints made to local institutions, Jack, they would have just bullied the head and said, give me the names. That is what he's att he was attempting to do with the UN. Give me the names. I'm going to deal with them condignly. I'm going to put them in my black book. But no, 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 no. What, what I say, as a paddock and as a truck are two different as. Jack, you got to decide which one you're riding. Them boys say he was smoking cheap bush weed. But definitely he has to be on something. I don't know what it is. Or he's getting high on oxygen. I don't know. But Jack Doe definitely doesn't sound like a sensible human being. Call your life. He's smoking busy busy, wrapping bells as it or something like that. This we smoke. Hmm. But I got something. Is that is it coincidental that the the CIA is down there, UN people down there, everybody down there. And one people think it's not coincidental. But this message I got for Granger, Harmon, and the 20 something parliamentarians that is fighting down there. I'm going to read, I'm going to say it. Throughout history, it has been the inactions of those who could have acted, the indifference of those who could have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it matters most. That has made it possible for evil to triumph. Eo Selassie. He said so. And that is what we're getting from those that are fighting down Norton. Instead of fight Norton, go and fight the evil. This is what I gotta say. And to Miss Mia, continue your thing, y'all. She running around parading around the world as though she is the black Jesus of the Caribbean, but we see through you and the rest of the world see far through your meal. Do as much as you could do, but there is only so much you could do. When you're going to want to bundle Indian reparation with black reparation, it's total different. It's two different things. One come broke and one come with money. So the one with money had more than us. So they got to wait their ass down the line for the one. they going to fight for the self people. We're going to fight for real. Morning. Call your life, good morning. Miss that one. I got a tune to play for y'all. It's Free Talk Friday Warm. Let me play something. You don't know what you have until it's gone. You don't know what you have until it's gone. Now you're up and gone away, baby. Didn't want to stay, baby. I was in the play, baby. I just want to hear, baby, where you really want me to. Should I know my love for you is true? Can you been me? Can you been tell me that you're never gonna leave? Can you been tell me that you're never gonna leave? Can you been tell me that you're never gonna leave? Can you been tell me that you're never gonna leave? When you listen to the lies that they filling you inside, yeah, don't believe. They will try everything to make we unhappy. When you listen to the lies that they filling you inside, yeah, don't believe. They will try everything to make we unhappy. Oh, tell us people what we only end up in fight. Tell they want to fool you, saying I ain't doing you right. Cut up of me, girl, you know the truth. Girl, you been, girl, you been tell me that you never gonna leave. Girl, you been tell me that you never gonna leave. Can you been tell me that you never gonna leave? Can you been tell me that you never gonna leave? <laughs> 
But it's okay, girl, follow your mind, girl, follow your heart We go try everything, girl, to try it with your part My love is okay, girl, follow your mind, girl, follow your heart We go try everything, girl, to try it with your part Ooh, jealous people want we Only end up in fight Tell the one to fool you Say I do you right I just realized something. Were you guys hearing music? <laughs> were you getting music? I hope you were. Um, were you getting music? Did you hear that song by Vikash? Um, wait, wait name? Vikari Singh? You don't know what you have until it's gone. I don't know if you were hearing. I hope you were hearing. I'm going to see you starting another argument there. What PNC did for um, Indo Guyanese. Why are we go there? Some people would never acknowledge the good of any anything anything that the PNC did, right? All them Indo um, religious holidays and so on that they got in this country, they came under PNC. And up to now, the PPP, although they, they they've been approached for several years. By several Indo Guyanese representative organizations. They can't give them Indian arrival day. They can't give them Indian arrival day. And don't let them tell you if it's Indian arrival day. Go and check the records. It is arrival day. Because the PPP is scared to give the Indo Guyanese Indian arrival day. I know why they are scared. A lot of other people know why they are scared. But even that, they can't give them. All those Indo you know, religious holidays and so on, Fox Bonham and the PNC give Indo you know, Guyanese. But their own PPP government can't give them one Indian arrival day. They have to name it arrival day. Ask yourself why. Call your life. Yes, good morning, Mr. Abzama. Let me tap into that. Um, we also want to remind the listening public, PNC had never given afro Guyanese a holiday. All the holiday was given to indo Guyanese, But yet, the ignorance of the Indo community are branding and labeling Bottom as the worst person. Secondly, I remember as a young man reading the Ghana National newspaper at the time, when, when Eric Gary went and uh, Bracha went, the editor of the paper was Ricky Singh. He write, Bracha gone, Gary gone, who next? And Bonham respond that he was next because he was the next victim at that time. Later on, I met Ricky Singh in Barbados in 1990, early 1990. I did met Maya also as a young immigration officer. Okay? At that time, Barbers were serving what cut were there were about 70% Guyanese who work in the, in the civil service society of Barbies at that time. And a lot of them were from Guyana and a lot of them were Indo descent. And Maya was being influenced by those people. What she's doing now is nothing strange to me. Okay? Ralph, I met Ralph while he was opposition leader in a place called Beck, um, Greg Vincent Vincent. And he always gave me the impression he is a nationalist. He, he is an originalist, right? Let me say this to the guy in his public. These guys are opportunists, right? They, they found a puppet and they are his puppet master. They realize they can use Ali for everything and they're using Ali left, right, and center. My question to Guyanese in the diaspora and in throughout the world, if Ali is serious about restoration for black people, why the hell he keep taking away land from black people families rather than leaving these lands that belong to them? From the generation, they know they don't have the finance to, to, to develop this land. Why are he taking that taking from them and still fighting for restoration of black for slaves? Which I think is nonsense. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for your call. I might like I, I might like a person, but I love me people more. <laughs> well I do it. Right? 
Ali might like black people, but he loves his people more. <laughs> I, uh, you know, yeah, I take a lot of things. Oh, I saw this comment I wanted to respond to. I think it came from Miranda. What can the UN Human Rights Commission Committee um, do to Guyanese? Nothing, because Ghana is a sovereign state. I don't know if you guys remember me making that um, comment, not in those words, while I was chatting with um, Dr. Enzi the other morning. Is the Ghana government so, quote unquote, lackadaisical about um, appearing at this committee because they tell themselves that the UN will not be able to do them anything or cannot do them anything or something to the extent. You see why I like to talk with Miranda? Miranda gives me an insight into the thinking of our cabinet, of, of the cabinet, the PPP cabinet, of which Miranda Brong is a ranking member. Right? That is exactly it. They don't believe that the UN, um, apart from exposing them and embarrassing them and so on, has much as that they can do to them. I think that is naive. Because again, action speaks louder than words. Look around the world and you will see the role of the UN in a lot of what takes place. Where is regime change? Where is massacre? You know? Um, Check out, you find in me, the UN in the middle of most of it, or all of it, in some way, shape, or form. Call it like. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Daki. On the outset, that uh, I endorse much of what you said on the opening, uh, which regards to monthly and, 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 and the elections. Um, secondly, I am wondering, and I'm asking myself a question, why is it that the Combined opposition is not protesting the the, the, the local UN thing because it's like um, election is not far uh, far away and, and, and we need um, uh, a clean voters and biometrics. Are we going to go into those election without a clean list and, uh, and, 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 and biometrics? Are we going to do that? That's political suicide. And, and I can see no action on the part of the opposition, either AFC or, or, or WPA or, or, or uh, the TNC. Nobody is expressing this issue. I mean, at this time, in the, the, the United Nations engaging the government and building them, you should have been there protesting, calling for this. I, I don't understand that. Um, thirdly, um, I, I want to say that. Guyanese has to determine the future Guyana. Um, it is for the people of Guyana to take stock of themselves and ask themselves where is it that they want to be and in the next 40 years from now, 20 years or so on. And if you do not act now, um, there will be no more Guyana for Guyanese. If you take a look, look they, 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 they got more clean. They, 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 they give her a whole big, big chunk of land on the, uh, Maurice, uh, in Maurice. Heaven knows. I mean, you can't go to Barbados and get that. It, you understand what I'm saying? This, that land could have gone to either Indian Dionese or Black Dionese to develop it too far in. And to develop Guyana, it's gone to, 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 to Barbados. Um, the second thing you have the, 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 the Venezuelans that are coming here and getting more rights now than Guyanese, people coming, coming, coming in from all over the world and benefiting from, from, from the proceeds of Guyana's wealth and Guyanese is still suffering. So I call this morning um, to the Guyanese people, we talk too much, we talk too much. There needs to be action, get out there protest these, these, these uh, atrocities, because let me tell you something about it. If we allow this situation to persist, now, they say in Region 1, there is more uh, 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 Venezuelans than Guyanese um, living there. 
And you can obviously see, you, you can see them in George Shanti and, and certain parts of Burbies. So now, if Maduro said, all right, we don't want to uh, lose bomb for them, let me, let me flood you all over into one. You know, about like 300,000 people. What, what happens then? He, 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 can, he can say he has a claim. He can see the benefit of this. The TPP is doing that because they, they allow them in because they want votes. But they are not thinking in the long term that, okay, if, if you get a, a, a the majority of Venezuelans, you have a Venezuelan president, well, then he, he surrender a super vote to, 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 to Venezuela by the click of his finger. So now, my charge is to the people of Ghana, you gotta take stock of yourself. You see all them right stands on, on the Supremo Coast, right up to Tushin. Bear in mind, the Supremo Star from Tushin goes right up to uh, Marawana, Babaruma, and the entire interior region of Guyana. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? So, given the fact, if you allow this to happen, there will be no more Guyana for your children and your children's children. And this is not about race. It's, 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 it's about a Guyanese thing, the survival of the nation at the time. We ought to take stock of what born on and, and Japan found us. And based on that, the, 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 the PPP has now constituted is not about Japan. No, not a semblance of Japan teaches it here. The other day, the other one went up to Babu Jan and used that to change to cut out people. Before we eat. Morning, everybody. Morning. Are you morning? Welcome to another program of Guyanese Morning Time. It's 7 hours 37 on the 25th day of March in the year 2024. Hey, we got just about a week for March disappear upon me. Is where this year going? Three months done, gone already. Morning, are you morning? How are you doing? How was I last night? How was your weekend? What did you do over the weekend? Did you rest and recuperate? Did you did you get yourself some TLC? That's tender loving care. Did you pamper yourself? That is. Did you take time to go <laughs> to the um, salon and pamper yourself? What did you do for the weekend? Spend some quality time with family and friends. Drink a beer, felt a dog. What did you do for the weekend? What was your last night? How was your last night? Are you well rested? Do you feel today that you are In a better position to confront the nastiness of this wicked and vindictive set of people. I want to call them crosses to this country. I don't think when I talk about crosses to this country, I'm only talking about those in the dirty stinking PPP government. Also talking about those well who are friends to the dirty stinking PPP government. And those who, by way of their actions, are supporting, whether they are aware of it or not, the action of the wicked, dirty, stinking PPP government. This man here, they're in a cuss-out mood. So y'all could come like cuss out. <laughs> I see they got more than a quarter dozen PPP louses on this program early morning, calling people clung and fool and dunce and all kind of thing. But some of them said done that. Some of them said done that they can't recognize how done they don't. And there's none so blind. And he who does not recognize that they're blind. <laughs> Why are you mind? Welcome to the program. I got some stories to tell y'all. Eh -eh. Let me let uh, y'all remember Shard Boss or Ass, whatever the word is. Um, the 
done the same banner that Carl in the other day on the program for cost we out and tell me how the coalition would never get power again and such ignorance and so on and so forth. Uh -uh. I told you all that is um with name photograph and number and so on, right? Yeah. You see that man? That man is catching cat. <laughs> Them banner is kitchen cat. You know the man gonna change the photograph. He couldn't change the number because they already got all of them. But he must have assumed that you know I didn't um save the photograph and so on. But when you're war, you got when you're at war, you gotta be 10 steps there to open it. And so I had the man photograph saved and so on. And you know, I like checking on the enemy. I so I checked and I recognized that, you know, the man went and he changed the photograph to a bunch of roses. <laughs> you know, coming down with a bunch of roses, coming down. Why did you choose a bunch of roses? I wonder if it's another rosy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Titi latte. Because as a matter of fact, somebody did note on the program that said this this um this one cost it like a bigger one. So the possibility is y'all are right, you know. Maybe it's a titilati. One of the alphabet characters might very well be. Right? Might very well be one of them dirty character. Um so I, I I reached out and I said, um uh -uh, you shame by you change your um your DP to a bunch of roses. But let's tell you they don't save it in here. Why should you save it to me? Um share it to me, me, me viewers and so and the titty latic cuts out again. F you blah blah blah, you so and so racist. Now, based on the photograph of this titty latic, is a black clone, you know. So the black dunce is accusing me of racism. The black house slave was accusing me of racism. The black kitchen cat was accusing me of racism. There's all that is duck and run for cover when they get confronted. They can't face the light of day. Young, dumb, and aggressive. I, I can't find other adjectives, adjectives right now for that dunce. The mad DP is of him sitting in a whole rundown looking office you know in the ministry there's got some condemn office with some three-legged desk and so on it looked like one of them rundown areas in some public building he took his photograph that he was using as his dp and he really arrived because all right today in the office doing shitty work for the ppp so they're in an office. I got an office I could go to every day or so. Doing shitty work for the PPP. That still makes your shit cleaner, my brother. Right? It still makes you a shit cleaner. Shit cleaners don't get to eat at the main table. They eat by the back door. They are come through the back door. So I want some of y'all understand that. And these are the brothers who would sell their, 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 their whole family. For that, I don't know. I feel that they're doing something for themselves. Pity you, man. Pity you. I pity you. A lot of y'all gonna wake up in the morning and realize that when we address you here, we address you out of love and we address you out of care and concern. Because you're expendables. 
you are expendables. Ask the Kings. I'm sure the Kings and Brutus are causing the day. They're causing the day. They went in bed with the PPP because they realized, oh, shoes, boy. All these people do is sodomize us. I know they're leaving us to the wild. We can't get the right like every citizen to operate a sand pit for which we already got leases. And a lot of y'all don't come to realize day by day that that is what is happening to you. You are being used and then unceremoniously forced in a corner. A pity y'all. Pity all you. This morning I want to talk about enough things. Like I say, the topic this morning is cutting your face, cutting your nose to spite your face. You ever old people say that? Sometimes you got to cut your nose to spite your face. Sometimes you have to do all kinds of unsavory things just to send a message. This morning I got something to do. By the way, I noticed that um, Punai and Punai wrote to the real low life. Y'all know who's the real low, low life? Y'all know who's the real low life referred to one of the Muhammad um, Chronicles. That's what I want to call them, the Muhammad Chronicles. Shell Muhammad got a whole long list of voice notes and so on out there describing the real low life. Them would us eat out a paper bag and coffin boxes. Right? Them would us scam people. Them who the Mohammeds had to send to get um, table etiquette at Carnegie. Yeah, them is all um, the Mohammeds describe as a real low life. So I know this Punai and Punai work to the real low life. On behalf of the Mohammeds, they say, Hey, you owe us 3,000 years you borrowed to walk behind the Bali tyrant to India. Imagine you borrowed 3,000 US to be a bag man to India. Ten million you borrowed to set up the Pui groups or the Pui group, whichever one it's called. Seven point five million you borrowed to set up Daybreak News. We want we money. We get seven days with seven days to pay us. But like a lot of people in Ghana, I think um, <laughs> I am surprised that the Mohammeds got such high expectation of the real low life. Because if they realize you had to pull this thing out of the gutter from so deep down in the gutter to teach them how not to eat in paper bag. <laughs> right? Paper bag Chinese is the cheapest Chinese, you know. Right? You got to pull them from so deep down in the gutter to teach them how not to eat in paper bag. Where you expect that they're going to get 17.5 million or 17.8 million I think 17.5 million, 3,000 US, something like that. 
to repair you in seven days. I mean, it's, it's the season. So a lot of people got fit in the resurrection and so on. But where is where is low life finding this money from to give you all? Right? So I see the Mohammeds are demanding true punai and punai, the money from the real low life. And they say we want it in seven days. Let's see how that will play out. But they say those who the gods want to destroy the first, first make mad. And so I don't know if it's this pressure from the Mohammeds and so on got the real low life going mad. But the thing say that it called in any guy the police force to arrest Kiraki Amsterdam. And you now you got to watch it because the thing is now coming for Anil Nandlal's job. Or um, I know the police used to get legal advisor. So whoever the legal advisor for the police, including the DPP, best watch it. Because the thing coming for the job, I don't know if the thing believes that you could earn $17.5 million working for the government in those um, offices. Well, you quite could. But the things you have to involve in will take the thing right back to the lowest of the low in the gutters as the real low life. I want to say this. I don't mind who wants to hold me accountable. I like when people hold me accountable. But do it out of honesty. Do it with a straight face. Don't be deceitful. Don't be criminal in your conduct. Don't cut and paste. Don't cut and paste. When I come to you, I come straight. When I want to cuss you, I just cuss you. Don't be editing and chopping and pasting my comments, uh, uh, versus people's comments and so on. And then tell your friends over the guy in the police force, arrest that man. Leonard Hassan, I want to believe the song problem might be yours because we're getting sung there. Please check. I will check also. Right? A number of persons over the weekend has, um, have been calling me and telling me, um, your name call him, Mr. Amsterdam. Yeah, right. Right, Lynette. Please check your system. I'm getting sung there. Others are getting sung too. Mr. Amsterdam, your name calling. The real low life they're going on and talking how you're upset, how you're hot belly, how we can't function. Well, I'm happy to have that impact on y'all because y'all dirty and stink. Right? And sometimes the shittings, excuse me, language people that you get as a result of what you say you heard, it isn't necessarily as a result of what you heard. It's because you overdo it. You overdo it. And so maybe the end of spring is damaged. I wonder if you know what that is. I wonder. You know, they say little by dog and auntie man. You just got to stay clear of because they ain't got time and peace. I've been staying clear of little by dog and auntie man. Low lives and so on for quite a while. But sometimes you just got to address them. I know a lot of people want to address them, but I just got to address them sometimes. On the morning of the 16th of February, a caller called into this program and said some things which everybody would consider violent in nature. Like always, I allow the viewer to express himself, himself, and then I responded. And I started by saying, I don't necessarily agree with the violence. However, 
I think you have a point that there's so there are lots of people who are humbugging the progress of this country and so on and so forth. Oh, that is it's because it's Holy Week. The devil come out to tempt me. Okay. I could understand. Imagine a low life devil. <laughs> a low life devil. I know I didn't devil, you know, the last of the lows. Who think that it come out of the gutter because people lend them 17.5 million US or 17.5 million Ghana dollar or wherever the amount I can't remember. Some of you are destined to stay right in them stinking gutter because it's your mindset. So this cross. Because it's only week. Jesus had to carry a cross. This cross. Took the comments. Of the caller. And. Posted up and dwelling on it. He had a whole program in about three hours. To say I'm inciting violence and whatever and whatever and whatever. Why you did not show the other part of the clip? Where I said I don't necessarily support the violence, etc., etc. Y'all is some low life criminal. Y'all is some low life criminal, and this way I'm gonna stay right there. As the lowest of lows, doing the dirtiest of work for your handlers. I understand it's an election year. I understand the PPP would love to see me off of these programs. Because when I come here, I come hitting with the facts. I address issues for the greater part. And so the PPP is going to, form, go, going to do all manner of things to get me out of the way because they see me as a stumbling block. There's no weapon as powerful as education. And that is what I try to bring to people every day I come here. And the PPP can't deal with education. Because all of them don't stop. All they could see is an opportunity to steal and kill and, and deceive. And you're all doing the nasty work. So this cross of whistling to the um to the to the police. You all need to rescue that camp them since the 16th of February. This thing happened, and you know about I ain't hear nothing about him being arrested. Arrest me and lock me up way. By your mother. You got mother. I know you ain't got wife because she run and left you. Because you're an abuser. You live anywhere now that they could arrest me and put me in one of your bedrooms? Um, I said it's all the PNC and its supporters know that I'm in them. You know, big word by. You know, big word. I don't attack people. I just don't attack issues. But when people come for me, I tell you already, I ain't Michelle Obama that has gone high when people go low. I could go lower than them. I can go very low. And so instead of trying to be smart, my character, this low life, this cross, the real low life according to the Mohammeds, this junkie, reform junkie, must be truthful in his presentations. Go get the rest of the tape and play it for your viewers. You are the one inciting. Because just like the dunces who listen to you, as dunces you are, they got more dunce people that just listen to you. They jump on your bandwagon and start going out with stupidness. I want to tell Kumar I sing this morning. I want to tell Kumar I sing this morning. If you think you're ready, come. If you think you're ready, Kumar, come. And the rest of all of them went up on the 
that is thinking cross program talking crap y'all come am i intimidated by foolishness and so when y'all want popularity you can get y'all it this is come on sing after the low life the real low life did it work yes you guys ban fucking racial but a dead racial are you fucking inside nasty and opian I have fight for fucking position. I ain't gonna run there. Uh. Ranger been in fight fucking arena for come up. Ranger doing anything good? Huh? Ranger went in fight fucking arena. Do good. Also steal. You need minister them. And I just want one fucking arena. Uh. I can't get in power. I have threatened for killing them. Now you fucking wisdom knowledge. Racial wisdom. Are you fucking on look like human being? Are you fucking inside nasty, dirty? You can be how much you do for black people. They will still turn back and bite your squint. You can get a gold spoon. Well, I don't think all fucking black people stay there like that because I have black family. But are you in the fucking PNC? Fucking really nasty. Are you do so much a wrong fucking thing? Yeah? So much a wrong thing I do. I never don't fucking shame. Don't kill him for Ali and Jack D and Nandala and Ashley Singh. I go kill them. If I get me a leader, we're talking. You just gotta walk up and go and fucking do it. Go and kill them. Are you fucking dirty in this now during Guyana? I always want to pull on Guyana. Why are you doing fucking Glenlar? Glenlar is the next one to Glen. And you fucking inside nasty. Like a fucking moose and dark shit. Y'all hear this cross? Come on, sing. This cross, living in the US. This whole cross living in the US and joining the real low life. To attack people here. This cross. And so I want to tell Kumar Singh like I want to tell the Gori man. If you think you're ready, come man. Yeah, come. Because I'm not intimidated. I'm not afraid. The police self could come. Because police are charged. The court has tried cases. And as I go up here and lock up my neck for dog. And I think I've established for quite a while. Me a frightened lock up. Sharon Ford, I don't need to put on no bleepers. I need to let you understand these crosses and criminals and their mindset. It's how they could express themselves. It's how they could express themselves. Yes, that was a voicemail to me, Wayne. And so I want you to understand how they could express themselves. So when I choose to express myself to you, I could understand why. This class is asking what the PNC has ever done for Ghana. And no matter how much you do for black man, they'd always be bitter. Well, let me say historically, Kuli people not done none for black man in this country. Black man do for Kuli people. Even when they brought them as indentured laborers, black man had to teach them. Black man had to teach them. Black man still teaching them. The other day, I think it was Miranda Brown who said, um, the former financing, finance minister blowing his arms. He was former finance minister by appointment. But he was finance minister way before he became appointed as finance minister. He used to do your budgets. He used to do PPP budget and put it in the hands of Jack Dion Ashley Singh. Them. Black man are always doing for you. Black Bush Polar. That is a cash cow. 
We don't got any farmers exception. We got to cut our, our crops. A black man put them together, you know. A black man put black bush pole together, you know. MMA. Um, and them, you know. A black man do them, you know, for born them. And for all the years that the PPP was in power, 23 years prior to now, they couldn't get the second phase of Black Bush Polo operable. They couldn't put it. So imagine since Barnum, the black man, this. That scheme was started, agricultural scheme was started with the intention of over a period of time, opening up more lands for face to face shovel scheme. But up to now, them Kuli can do them. But Kuli, I reap the benefits from the first phase for the most part. That ball is tyrant. When it suits him, he just tell you, I want Buxtonian. One of my, my, my one of my most influential teachers was a book Buxtonian. I want black woman from Buxton. She named Finale Abrams, if me remember. Them cross this. The only thing the Indos have done. In this country, is tech from black people. They haven't done anything for us. It's like somebody sent me a voice note last weekend. Um, sorry for Magadag, Magadag, turn wrong by you. There's a PPP story, there's a no guy in his story. You do so much for them. You, you, you see them as people, or you try to see them as people. You embrace them, and all they got is a dagger to push in your back. What the PNC ever do for Ghana? The PNC, for the greater part, maintain the territorial integrity of this country. They're legends. When you look at the history of this country, what black man do to stave off incursion by the tsunamis, to stave off incursion by the Venezuelans, and maintain the territorial integrity of this country. There are stories of black man tying himself to a helicopter. To fly over, I think New River Triangle, they might call the area. And it's because at that time, resources were scarce. Resources were scarce. But now, in a time of plenty, in a time of plenty, them coolie crab. And the ERC could come because, quite frankly, I ain't got no respect for them either. God, them two is a set of bottom cleaners for the PPP. Them coolie crab in a time of plenty cannot maintain the territorial integrity of this country. Imagine in this day and age where you got all kinds of um, satellite imaging and so on. These jackasses sitting in office in Georgetown, and the Venezuelans have made a state out of a secular one third of Ghana. How do these jackasses re um, respond? By going to inter-parliamentary meeting and calling for <laughs> democratic parliament 
in Venezuela. Democratic Parliament in Venezuela. Their heads are so much up in their assholes that they didn't even realize that they were, they were going to be blindsided with that foolishness. They are so accustomed to deceit, deception, dishonesty that they put on the motion the name of countries that didn't support them don't see in motion only to be embarrassed internationally only to be exposed once more for the dunce and corrupt set of crosses that they are that is what they give to Ghana embarrassment embarrassment I think Pagwa got something to do with go over evil. <laughs> Let's wear the good and wear the good in this country. The good and the evil in this country. Regardless of the failures, because the PNC got failures. Because of the failures, or regardless of the failures of the PNC. When you weigh the good against the bad, the PNC will always, at least so far in my eyes, come out smelling like a rose compared to these jackasses in the PPP. The jackasses that the majority of indo Guyanese following. And don't tell me you're not like them. They lead you. You support their leadership. You don't tell them they're wrong. You don't behave like human beings. They behave like things that are led with rings through the nose. A jackass of a man named Manzo Nadir who got not one bone of democracy in the national party, in the local parliament. In the Guyanese parliament, gap on the international scene to tell people about democratic parliament. Let it start at home. Let it start at home. Let honesty start at home. And if you're honest at home, if you're democratic at home, you're not going to be caught with your pants down on the international scene as a liar. Imagine a motion being, um, what, what, what we say, um, denied, voted down on the international scene because of dishonesty. Can you imagine that? Regardless of what you do for black man, they're always bitter. What have you done for black people in this country? They had in Linden, the nursing school in Linden. These vindictive, these crosses, these criminals, these subhuman beings, because I don't know what else to call them. I don't, human beings don't be a summon. Them subhumans close down that nursing school, close it down, and pass an edict. Any of those people who were at the nursing school in Linden, if they apply to any other nursing school in this country, they're going to be banned. What do you call that? Black man been teaching them from them touch down as indentured laborers. They've been teaching generations upon generations and them. So that they could do better for themselves. And when they get political power, what they do? They are doing everything to prevent black men from getting education and skills that will empower them further. No Miranda Brown. 
I didn't wake up angry. I don't be angry, you know. I always tell people, nobody controls my emotions but me. But me. Maybe you have to be the other person to know where to touch me. They evoke certain reactions. But anger? <laughs> people don't control that. I just control when I get angry. I'm not angry. I'm being emphatic this morning. I'm telling you all as it is. Them classes shut down the nursing school. And it's your edict. Y'all dare not apply any place else in this country. We're going to ban y'all. Same nursing school that Black Forbes Barnum established so that every Guyanese, every Guyanese who had an interest in nursing as a science could go and learn the science of nursing. Never say Kole Kango, you never say Portegi Kango, you never say Amarinian Kango, all Guyanese. We're allowed to freely go to nursing school. But in their usual way, the Kuli leadership didn't support Indo Guyanese going to nursing school and, and becoming nurses. I have a clean black man shit. Black man been cleaning all your shit from time immemorial. Not because they had to, but because they got love in their heart and humanity and so the opportunity was presented for everybody to learn nursing who are gonna learn nursing and turn us go but in the usual scotch the art policy this thinking dirty subhuman cabal decide hey that we're gonna punish Lindeners most of them are black people them them they, they, they want to be in nursing and they just push back them they then just fight away when i will not do no and i will not do right by them shut down the nursing school punish them one of the certain sources of employment let me say let me call it that for young people in linden would have been nursing because once they go and they learn and they pass their exams and so on, the possibility is the system would employ them. Don't mind the starvation wages. It's better than no work. Them dirty people just decide we're going to shut it down. But one might argue, all right, um why do we all right uh, maybe they shut it down because they got enough nursing schools or they got enough nurses far be it from the truth far be it from the truth i think i read the other day they opened a nursing school in one of the indian dominated areas i can't remember if it's a secret or um region three or something but i remember seeing that so shut them down with predominantly African Guyanese. We benefit from attending, um, what's the name? Was Charles Rosa or something like that? The nursing school. But home one, in an area where predominantly Indo Guyanese will benefit. And on top of that, as I say, the, 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 the cherry on top of the pie. Go to Bangladesh. Go to Bangladesh and bring more low life like yourself. To take up jobs in the country. 700 nurses and medical workers are supposed to be brought to this country as of next month. I'm sure you would have seen the documents floating around from Brian Max. And I saw Sherrod posted them also. So I ain't even got to go and post them again for you. 700. 
And that is at the minimum as far as I'm aware. Now, nurses here are fighting for a livable wage. Nurses here are fighting for improved uniform allowance, risk allowance. And these low life, these subhumans are resisting it. They're not giving them their just Jews. But oh, if you see the promises, if you see the terms and conditions of work, for the nurses that they're going to bring, nurses and medical um, workers that they're going to bring in this country, the 700 plus. I'll tell you a few things about that. I'm going to tell you a few things. They're looking for 165 theater nurses. Intensive care nurses, they want 100. Emergency nurses, they want 100. General ward nurses, they want 135. Between the ages of 20 and 45 years. Now you all tell me, how many people between the ages of 20 and 45 years in this country are unemployed, are qualified to become nurses or to be trained as nurses? Wouldn't it be best? Wouldn't it be advisable? Wouldn't it make sense to train your people, allow your people to be trained so that they can take up the vacancies in these systems, in this healthcare system? No, we can't allow them because them people in Linden, a majority black man, and them go take up all them nursing job. And they're going to get security and tenure, and they're going to be able to provide for themselves. So we're not going to be able to go and buy their children to do our dirty work. No, we don't want them like that. We want them poor and depressed so that we could pay them pittance on the dollar and we could hire them to do all that is unholy. Like cleaner gutter? Hmm. Like clean and gutter. Right? So we want 700 Bangladeshis. But we shut down the nursing, the nurses training school in Linden. Where scores of Lindeners and people from Region 10 were being trained. But this Dotty Kumar telling me the more you give black man, the more them better. All y'all have been doing is taking from us. There are lots of leaders, black people, I can't call them leader. There are lots of black people who are complicit in that. Taking from us. As I continue, they must be verbally able to communicate. Must be able to verbally communicate in English. What is their basic monthly salary? For those who have three to five years experience, they will get. 140,000 Ghana dollars a month. And those who have more than was five years and above, they will get 180,000 Ghana dollars a month. Do we have any nurses on this program this morning? 
Y'all please and thanks, tell me what nurses are paid in this country. Between three to five years experience, the Bangladeshis are being offered $140,000, 700 US. And five years and above, they're being offered 900 US. What do they pay nurses locally? Y'all let me to understand. Let me continue to tell you. This is like another indentureship scheme, except that the benefits are bigger. Because in backward time, the indentureship scheme paid for travel, right? And living and so on, right? And they gave them preferential rates over the African Guyanese and so on, right? Am I wrong? Am I getting my history messed up? Am I as dunce as the real low life? Y'all help me to understand that. So it's a minimum three-year contract. Traveling expense. The employer will pay for the air ticket from origin country to Cherry Jagan International Airport. A single journey would be provided from Cherry Jagan International Airport into the country upon completion of three years employment contract if the employee fails to complete three years, the airfare will be borne by the employee. So we're going to pay for your outcome. And once you all complete the contract, you could pay for your go back to. Right? Watch this. Watch this. NIS shall be paid by the employer. Right? So the foreigners are being brought here to work and en en enrolled in our NIS scheme. Obviously, to get benefits <laughs> for which they did not contribute. Because from you pay one contribution and something happened to you, you're entitled to the benefits anyhow. Right? Good. Y'all watch that. The NIS scheme in tatters already. But we're going to bring foreigners and enroll them on the NIS scheme to suck some more of the resources out of it. They got more implications. I want to take my time this morning. Y'all don't think I ain't got nothing else to do. I got a lot of other things to do. But this is my patriotic duty. Do you think the government of Ghana is doing this recruitment through the Ministry of Public Service? No. The government of Ghana is not doing the recruitment through the Ministry of Public Service because they wanted to keep it hush hush, as they usually do. The backroom deals and the under the table deals and out of the eyes of the public and the lack of transparency, right? They got a recruitment company named Sigma. We're gonna talk about Sigma just now, but let me talk about the recruiters commission. The recruiter shall get a commission, a one-time commission for employees. Right? Good. So note that they are paying Sigma to recruit these 700 plus Bangladeshis to come to Ghana work. Right? I want to draw to your attention the offer of citizenship. I want to believe I missed it somewhere. Right? Opportunity to settle in Guyana. After working for two years, after working for two years, they can apply for permanent residence. I have the opportunity to take their family to Ghana. If someone has lived in Ghana for five years, then they are a citizen. Are you hearing me? Ghana's per capita income is $20,000 a threshold. Good. 
So please recognize this. Not only are they bringing 700 plus Bangladeshis to work, but they're offering them citizenship in two years. Not only are the Venezuelans being encouraged to come over the border and get ID cards, so they are being fast-tracked as citizens, but Bangladeshis are also being offered citizenship. Ask yourself why. I know you know, and all of you know why. Good. Here is a letter from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Dated February 5th to Sigma Engineers Limited Incorporated at 225F New Market Street, North Cummingsburg, Georgetown, Ghana. The email is TAA Majid or MG at sigmaengineers.com. Right? Most emails are formed with a part of people's name. So I want to assume that a Majid is involved there, right? Sign this letter signed by you, Todd. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Also signed by Roberta something at the notary public stamped by the embassy of Ghana at 2490 Tracy Place, Northwest Washington. Right? Signed by Habibur Rahman on behalf of the Bangladeshis in Washington, right? So the document is here with all of its signatures and stamps for authentication. Good. And so those are the, I want to call them facts, or if you want to call it, that's the evidence that your country the dear land of Ghana, where the criminal cabal has been displacing young people from being trained as nurses and medical technicians and so on, is now about to employ or import rather <laughs> in another indentureship scheme, I want to call it, more than 500, 700 Bangladeshis. Well, I want to draw something to y'all um, attention. <clears throat> it's usually difficult to find information on entities like Sigma Labs and so on, as they're masquerading now as Sigma. Right, um, engineers. But I want to encourage viewers to start a search. Start the search. for the beneficial owners of Sigma Labs in Ghana. If you check LinkedIn, according to LinkedIn, I'm seeing a letter.
Hakishun. Or later Hakishun. Right? That's what I'm saying. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm associating Sigma Labs with a past or current advisor on health to the PPP government. And so I'm asking y'all, if you got the information, cough it up. Who really owns Sigma Engineers in this instance? And the address of Sigma Engineers is similar to the address of Sigma Labs as far as I'm concerned or as far as I can remember. Sigma Labs have been around there for a while. Who are the beneficial owners of Sigma Labs? No Sigma engineers. And why is the government of Guyana hiring the Bangladeshis through Sigma engineers, which I believe is a spring off? Which may be a spring off of Sigma Labs. Let's start digging. We want to know. We want to know. But what is clear is this wicked and vindictive and corrupt subhuman cabal that we have as a government are adamant. They're definitive in their efforts to subjugate the working class in this country especially afro guyanese in this instance in the healthcare sector, even if it means bringing foreign nationals to take up job positions that ordinarily Guyanese should be able to get. And they have no qualms about it. The people, therefore, we always talk about identifying the problem. We know the problem is the PPP. What is the solution? The masses, the working class, those who are affected, family and friends, acquaintances and colleagues, all those who are affected by these decisions of the PPP must take a stand against it. We have been calling on the Ghana Public Service Union for a while to come out in solidarity with the teachers. Ghana Public Service Union. You don't need to come out in solidarity with the teachers. You need to come out in solidarity with the LK workers of this country. You need to come out and bring out your members to say, we are not going to stand for this nonsense. We are not going to be here. We are um, not going to be here having made all of the sacrifices. And then you got people from foreign lands. Coming to enjoy better terms and conditions of work than we are enjoying. Did I tell you that the government of Ghana, in that same um, document there, is paying for housing for the Bangladeshis? And a matter of fact, somebody might have recognized it in the budget because it was in the budget. Right? It was in the budget. Um, good. So go and check the budget, and you should see, um, The budget for housing and so on.
for the Bangladeshis because as part of the job offers, there is the offer of housing and health care and other such facilities for these people who are being imported to take jobs that ordinarily Guyanese should have been getting or even prepared for. Okay. In Ghana, in 2022, the unemployment rate was over 12%, 12.4%. Right? It was more than 12% in 2022. So you have more than 12% Guyanese unemployed. But instead of creating opportunities for them to be employed, what's happening? People are being brought into the country to take up their jobs. I don't think it's only happening in the healthcare sector. I'm sure that there are many other areas where this is happening, save and except that maybe people are not on theaters yet. What do you do with a government like that? That doesn't have the interest of the people at heart. The lines are open 6225923 is the number to call. I've heard folks like Dr. David Hines and so on say that times have changed. These are not the days of the revolution of the 60s and 70s. What I want to say, people remain the same. Or the concerns of people. have remained the same. And so if one action worked for them in the past, I'm almost positive it can work for them in the current. Guyanese must determine what they're going to do about a set of people who can defend and secure and maintain the territorial integrity of this, this dear land of ours, number one, and who can't look out for the citizens of this country, but rather would undermine their right to work, among other things by importing foreign nationals in their own schemes to boost electoral numbers among other things and subjugate people. Call your life, thank you for holding. Good morning, good morning to you and all my black brothers and sisters in Guyana. Help is on the way, but it's a matter of time. But we have to do our best. Don't forget this word, do our best and leave the rest. God use these words. Well done, my beloved son. It's not my program, so I cannot say everything. The reason why God used that word to, to that individual, because God see the good words coming out of his mouth, the good doings, the explanation. And today I'm saying this word to you. Well done, my beloved black brother. And I do hope the leader who I love so much, I wouldn't take a bullet for him because people just change overnight. But I will represent him by encourage people to go out and vote for him. I do hope he just listen to you every morning, find time and listen to you because he need a prime minister like you to be by my side. Because Khan, the man that named Khan in the raw, up to this day, he always re reported me, reporting me all, all the nonsense. But let Khan know, Lord, that here, me is not reportable. Me have a beast back on the door. Send anyone ever disturb me or harass me. Now, Mr. Davis said that he rather want Kohli, Prime Minister, 
that thing was eaten not up at this day. But can use the word long before somebody, if you guys remember this word, can I say the extra garden right, like, please? Can say Jack Gill, when the nurses there was striking and all these things, Jack Gill should send them all their black nurse and bring in nurse from Bangladesh. My God, speak it out this morning, Flash. Try to let my black brothers and sisters stop sleeping. Stop paying your mind and focus on this program. Program cannot help you. Majority of them not help you. Amsterdam program will help you. Mr. Um, Paul Slow program will help you. Because that is food for the brains. That is food to give you encouragement. We got to fight my grandmother to teach Flash Garden. Nothing come to black people easy. Although it is your own, but you still have to fight for it. It's a fight for it. It belongs to you. And black people is not fighting. I could go back and, and remember why we, the people, not go outside there and fight. When them people bully Mr. David Granger out of office, was the opposition was not there with them, could he support them? Would he support them alone? Cause a problem for the East Coast, everything. And who was our Minister of, of Home Affairs? Mr. Ramdekton, who got to kill them black children? Who was Minister of Affairs at that time? Mr. Ramdekton. And I could go on and on, but you don't like me going and going with Mr. Ramdekton. But that's okay. We need a man like you to be our president. And people must begin to rally for that right now, not tomorrow. It's too much going on in our country. Diana belongs to black man. Is black man kill? Black man developed Diana when Cody ran away in 92. Black man stay in that punishment and build and build Guyana. Why black people cannot enjoy the island gas? This man says it's time. God wants that we know plain black man. You got to fight what belongs to you. And we always said, for God bring favor to his knee for letting people them go. God kill. Why black man can't kill? This is not racial or overtaking. It's the word of God. Samson asks God and uses the word to God, Lord, restore back my strength. Let me kill all these wicked people. He said, my enemy, because God tells us, God, and pray for your enemy. But wicked people, Jack Yo and his supporters, them are wicked to black people. Listen to what the man said from his program or his video. Black man, low life. Jack Yo use the word. The holy lady used the word in boy, Mr. Black man, only belly crab, dog. And it, before we go, and ever Jack Joe said, when you win, no 2020, a media house asked Jack Joe, so do you believe the coalition is going to come out? He said, no, but what I do know, they will come for eat the food with the God of mercy. Flash Garden get more black and cold sweat. And black man, last week Friday, one black media man keeps some party or some, something. If you see black man outside there, and to the black man, I can't find for, for, for telling them to come outside. Last year, black, fr black Friday, if you see black man 12 o'clock, left them out and children and, and run down. Go put money in a businessman pocket, wanna live in Guyana courts. Let me come and have an for lead them there. This is our problem with black people in Guyana. We talk, talk, talk too much. Too many programs, too many programs destroying and keeping black people in poverty because they're making money. I have many programs before I go last. I heard this last week from, from Mel Mel. Mel Mel tell one of the supporters of oh. I'm going to leave Facebook right now and go for TikTok because TikTok, I just make my money from TikTok for talk what black people problem. What black man don't get news before and know what's going on, they're still paying money for it back again. Black man, flash garden, encourage y'all. It is time for Bonga and the Dong. I let everybody get job for playback. If 
if that bank is coming for work, and you run them out of your country. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your call. Lines are made on 6225933 is the number to call. You tune to the guy in his morning time is the 25th of March in the year 2024. <clears throat> Miss that one. And if this figure might not be on the housing, don't you think it's possible it's under um, health? Call it life. Good morning, to you, Mr. Fedaki. God bless your program, the rest of the guy in this nation, and also those in the outer diaspora. Mr. Kadaki, you touched upon a thing that Rhonda spoke about <laughs> in a short while in the past. Which I have support or is it's gonna be discovered because there are many things under the court that is coming out. You touched upon it this morning and I'm talking about the health section, the health sector. There are a lot of things that guy guy needs is going to discover just now that is going on in the hospital with a lot of other private hospitals in coalition with this government. And and why I'm saying this, because I had a period of time where we were on the talk there in the park. Around that time, I was dealing with the hospital directly. And there are certain things that is there that are going to unfold themselves that the opposition them need to be aware and come to themselves. They need to be more alert. And also, in general, because it's just the tip of the iceberg you touch there this morning. The thing we see guy now with what they're saying for doctors and them, they're not causing they all is planned out, all is drafted out. The black to the Linden um, Medical School, all is orchestrated. They plan all that. There's a part in the plot that is taking place in this country. However, this morning, I want to speak to some parents, uncle, aunt, grandmother, grandfather, those who can help contribute to your young children, mind and heart. I am asking you all. Please, I know a number of young people now becoming more wayward because of the technology we're going on. But I'm asking y'all, those who could pray, those who could make contact with God, do it. I am asking y'all and speak to y'all young ones. What is happening in this country is not a coincidence. There's a manifestation taking place. We see the young people them getting, not they're only getting their hands, but their soul and their mind. It's, it's a, like a mandra we're going on. Is a repeat. If you find you're going to hear the repeating enough song, lyrics, and all these things, after a period of time, wars have more than power. In other words, the wars are a vehicle for spirits. Every war that comes in the mouth of a human being is like a vehicle driving upon the road with a, a human in it. You can see a vehicle driving, and you know that there's a human somebody that behind the wheel for it to move. But you may not be able to tell what race, or if it's a male or a female. But you know a human being is there, you might not be able to tell how much is in there on this kind of thing. It's the same thing with the words. God gives us the power of word. That's what the word of God gives the power of life and death lies in our tongue. And if we do not claim to take control of the thing before we talk, thing before we act on the world tongue, God look before you leap. You're gonna find yourself in enough, enough problem. <laughs> like how you see the trying for frame you there now. With the calling, the person calling and speak a little careless word, and they try to tag it on you because they say you didn't make objection or what the case may be. And this board is trying to do that. He's sending things directly to the police. Can you believe this? And there's so much thing going on in the country that he not sending directly, including himself, to the police. However, I'm asking, as I said before, to the parents, them, because this young generation here, the devil is going to swipe them up through the leaders that we have. The leaders that are making the sacrifice of this young generation. So those who are not becoming spiritually conscious and aware, they're going to lose life, limbs, and soul, and freedom are going to be taken away. So we need that, and the church is them. Please strengthen y'all prayer beating, prayer so and try to make counsel the younger generation to the best of y'all ability. Oh, ever Mr. Kadaki, and then the Guyanese nation, if Guyanese, the righteous mind and heart I'm speaking to, stand up and please vote 
again this government for god's sake encourage everybody to put an x again this guy that came with an interim body end up in the country to let that happen but this government need to go the evil that they are submitted to the kingdom of darkness the soul that they are selling that is why all this bloodshed going on accident more all these things going on it is soul selling going on it is blood demon feed for the flesh and blood of humanity they try to live in the soul of the body of a human through the control of the mind. That's why they are depressing. They are suppressing people. If you look at you going out with the teachers, the teachers they are teaching who? Our young children. And if the government has no respect for the teachers and the young children to give them a good, better pay, they can get better education. Imagine we, the people who is inside. That, that, that's our conference. What is happening, Guyanese? Please, please, Guyanese, vote this government out. This is bare evil and nothing about evil and pro evil, but we're going to get there if we stand up in the righteousness and resist this evil. You cannot take another five years this week and evil is. God bless this nation. God bless the program, Mr. Padaki. And we are going to get there by the grace of God if we stand up and resist the wrong at all costs, physically, spiritually, and mentally. God bless you, Mr. Kadaki. God bless the guy in this. God bless this country. Have a blessed day. Thank you for your call. Call your life. Call your life. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Dak, um, Kadaki. This is what I want to understand. Why is the people of Guyana accepting this nonsense? The citizens have a decision to make. They, the, the, the powers in the citizenship on why are they uh, accepting it from people like Javier Apanel and, and the stupid and competent government? What what guy these people waiting on for punishment? We already see the PPP track record. Why are they accepting it? And then you call him Pony Pony, Pony to, 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 to to help you. We could only do so much. Why is it that the people of Guyana are accepting this 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 um control from the PPP? The opposition leaders ain't doing nothing neither. None of them ain't doing nothing. The present, gov the present government is doing nothing needed the opposition. It's the people of Guyana got to make this change. I don't understand what is so hard to understand. How long are you going to accept dictatorship and pressure? Something is, 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 is wrong with the, with, with, with the society in Guyana. When the people of Guyana is 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 is, is gonna make this change, wait until next year election. Something is wrong, and the Guyanese people have to realize that. You can't keep repeating the same cycle. Right now, every time you hear about things happening in Guyana, it's sick my stomach because the people is accepting it. Guyana is probably the only country that accepts nonsense. If you look at other countries, do protest and demand change and change happen. What is wrong? Guyana is the only country that I know that people is accept nonsense. You imagine this government bringing people from Bangladesh and other places to get work in Guyana and the people in Guyana even even getting work even getting the privilege something is different than you know the Guyanese people sit down and accept it and then the hollering for the people in diaspora to help them we cannot do everything we can only do so much as the people in Guyana have to make the change. If they don't make the change, no. If they can't make it, no. Then guess what? They're going to doom 
And as far as I see, Guyana doomed so far. It's the people of Guyana have to make a change. But we are accepting it. So that's my contribution. Thank you. Call it life. Call it life. Yes, good morning, Mr. Amsterdam. Good morning, everyone in the Guyanese diaspora. Good morning, Andy. all Guyanese. Good morning to all the callers who called previously and made excellent points. I want to talk about the risk of the risk, the issue of race that you touched on this morning. You know, people say to me, Coffee, are you a racist? And I said, No, I'm not necessarily a racist. I'm caught up in a race conflict, but I'm not necessarily, you know, uh, against other races. Now, because I believe in diversity. I believe in, you know, you've got blue sake, you got kiskidi, they're all birds, they're all different types of birds. You know, I believe in different types of fruits, the box and spice, the bird bee spice. They're all mangoes. But there's diversity in fruits and there's diversity in everything in life. So it, 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 it's, it's a part of, 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 of our existence. However, when we have a particular amount of lessening of the white blood cells in the body, then we have a problem. We have acquired an immune deficiency. When the white blood cells are being downsized so much, there arises a problem which concerns human health globally. It's called acquired immune deficiency, AIDS. So when you are living in Guyana, you have people who are downsizing you economically. Downsizing you the way Ravi Dev has articulated to downsize us, to his Indian colleagues, economically. When you have cultural downsizing of African Guyanese, when you have ancestral downsizing of our ancestral lands, when you have nullification of law, then what must we do? What must we do as human beings? How do we stand around as African Guyanese in the defense force? In the police force and say, man, you know, I got to obey orders. Even when people are trying to downsize black people in the police force, downsize black people in the, in, in the joint services in the GDF, downsize black people in the public sector. Must we still say that it's okay for a proven PPP racist party who have been fighting against African people ever since we paved the way for them to come to Guyana? Because if we didn't liberate Guyana, there'll be no liberated land for them to come to because they were fleeing their own self-inflicted caste persecution. They were fleeing caste persecution in Hinduism. They came to Guyana and we embraced them. And what did they do? Instead of embracing us Africans, they saw us as the lower caste because the British said it that way and they start calling us Black Maribonta and they start fighting against us ever since. What did Jagan do? Jagan internalized his religion of India, Hinduism, took that caste base and says, oh, the black man is the new untouchable in Guyana. So they superimposed and they transferred caste from the dialects, the lower level of the caste system, and they hurled it or superimposed us upon African Guyanese. And ever since then, it's been a conflict with us and them. African Guyanese, as Gaddafi said, we have never in attacked East Indians initially. We simply defended and there's a difference. And police officers and GDF and joint services and the public sector persons must understand there is a difference. What good is it to be a GDF? You're going to fight against Venezuela to defend when you're being attacked, but you can't fight and defend people who are attacking you culturally, economically, can't give you a proper pay raise. Don't think you're worthy enough to get a free land. Don't think you're worthy to get more than 6.5, but yet you want to defend them? I'm talking to the police and the GDF and the public sector. 
What good is it to defend the PPP and they can't even uphold the same 50% that they will be crying in Parliament when they were in there? Obviously, that shows that PPP are not only against African Guyanese, not only against Guyanese, but they are definitely wicked and vindictive. I want you to decide for yourselves. You don't got to follow what Coffee says. I am just pinpointing how it is that human beings decide what is beneficial to us and what is not beneficial to us. We must decide. Once again, thank you for accepting my call. We must decide. Thank you for your call. I see, I see Miranda's Patana Jackass cap this morning. Well, let's say show me a company and tell you who you are. And so I'm not surprised that, um, you know, I could see the jackass side of you ever so often. Good morning, Kadaki and viewers. This morning, program was very interesting. I am not surprised about the information that you shared because the PPP was saying that all the time. They were saying that a very long time. And this is what I heard before, that the government is going to frustrate all opposition people, people who has jobs that they are not interested in, like teachers and nurses, and do they are going to frustrate them to leave the country that is what is happening nurses are leaving they're going to england and so they have the opportunity to bring in nurses they've closed the nursing school at linden an african populated area open a school in an indian populated area they are bringing nurses from bangladesh what else are we looking for? They are going to have many other things coming in. Employment would be from mostly Indian people. And so we, the Africans who developed Guyana, would not have a place. That is what they are saying. We would not have a place at the table. They have consistently said that and they continue to say it. This is something that should be looked at, not only locally, but internationally. What is happening in Guyana is wrong. This government is not for Guyana. It is not for the people of Guyana. This government is for anybody else who is not African descendant in, in, in Guyana or who don't abide where they're um, what they, they are doing. I must say that something serious is going to happen if this is not corrected. Thank you. Thank you for your voice note. The lines remain open 6225923 is the number to call. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kadaki. Good morning, okay. All right, let's take this call. We'll return to the voice note. Call you. All right. Um, I all decide where I want the man. Lord. Here, that's the scene. Call your life. I don't know where the disrespect is coming from, but this is like beyond me. Call your life. Yo, my name is Karaki. Go ahead. 
By the way, you don't come after them racial things do they're coming, man. I'll go point you, you mother. Doing. The lines remain open. When I come after them racial things, I'm going to go point your mother. Call your line. Poor Frank answer to the last one. Um, <clears throat> I want Indians to understand. Those Indians who are sitting back there and watching and seeing what's going on, I want them to understand that they must go and research Rwanda. If they think that they're comfortable, go research Rwanda. For those blacks that don't care to leave that country, when they find their backs against the wall, it's going to be like you put a cat, a tiger, or some one of them bad boys up on the wall, a snake. When they're going to strike back, if everybody is going to get hurt, everybody in the party is going to get hurt. So let them continue to create a who want to see situation in Guyana. The results, the end results will not be nice. And I've been saying this on this program for over and over and over again. It is coming. Number two, if people think that hell killing Guyana is bad, we know we'll see what bad is. We know that these people, when they're recruiting people, they do not do due diligence. And just like how they're building roads, just like how they get people building roads, these same recruiters going to just go out there and pick up any and everybody just for the money. Right? They're going to just pick up people just for the money. And now is when y'all will see they're going to bring who from where and this from where. I can only know to speak a little bit of English, but when it comes to comprehension, is a problem. And comprehension in medical field is very, very serious. It's a serious, serious thing. When you can't comprehend, that way you say, give us a you and give an insulin or something, you're going to hand in somebody, and people are going to start dropping. People, y'all need to think seriously. And xenophobia, now we're going to talk. The formulas that has been established over the years in different countries. So when these people come, you could make them go the same rate at which you come. Just think about those formulas that was established before. And you could use those same formulas to drive them away from taking your jobs away from you. Have a good day. Thank you for your call. How are you like? Hello? It's too CC, man. Oh, well, President Ali Boki. It's President Ali Boki in your mother, no? I mean, our mother does doubt by Bakewell nightly, so y'all don't try with me. The, the, lines, the lines are... Listen. Y'all don't let me get dark. Because I could do that too. Yes, good morning. Line? I'm on? Yes, God. Good morning, Mr. Sampson. I'm on the same public. You know, this morning it hit the core of my heart. But the gross negligence by this government. The way they are systematically degrading our folk Guyanese in Guyana. I think we need to have a national movement against foreigners, anti foreigners movement against this government. Let the Guyanese across the country understand and the diaspora. This government is in favor of foreigners in front of our own people. Secondly, I live outside the Guyana most of my life. More than half of my adult life I live outside the Guyana. I am in the 60s. We had to spend 15 long years in St. Kitts before you were entitled to apply for citizenship and paying all the taxes. Now, it is worse. Now they're saying you have to pay Social Security consistently before the grant of citizenship. Barbados, when I was there, was 10 years, right? St. Vincent, I work in all the Arena region. I work at all different levels for the listening public. But we country, our country, Guyana, is lowering the bar just to remain in power. I have a friend who works in Saudi Arabia on a 10-year contract. And in a contract, she had to leave. But now, this man, the worst man in this country, was in Adolf Hitler, is systematically pushing it and pushing the button and Afro Guyan sit down. Those who work with the PPP, especially, and shut them out. And the sad thing it is, Jack, they keep overreaching. 
every Afro guy that work in the PP administration take orders from Jack Dio. And that's how it is. And if anything different, let them say this. They call this program say they take orders, they work independently from Jack Dio. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your call. The last, the previous call that I talk about Ali and Bogo, Jack Dio got the tapes. Ask Brian Max. Who got buggered? What are you like? But, uh, you my mother? Eh? Mr. Kadaki is not teacher, is not son. I don't care what you man, say. Man. Hey! You're the real me is fuck your mother. Big man. Me is your mother, little boy. I say you got fucking mother. I say you is your mother, little man. boy. You're the one on team, man. Let me raise something like you. Me is your mother, little boy. <laughs> Call it life. Hey, good morning to that key. Good morning to listen to being published. You see people like them? Them is the people. The next thing you're telling me, I'm going to post the number line. <laughs> and let me go down the road. Continue, Carla. Yeah, them is the people who put pulling down this, 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 this country. People like them, right? Let me assume that he's a black man. They fighting on their own people. Look at Lyndon with Shama Salomon, right? Shama Salomon got a lot of black people fighting me down. Fighting me down, terrible. As mayor, he's the mayor and she's still super Lyndon. And he got a set of black people. Kashif and Shanghai and Gaspar, them fighting me down. Terrible. But the people of Lyndon need to stand with Sharma Solomon. You need to stand alongside Sharma Solomon and, 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 and let him know that he's not alone. Right? They are always pulling down the, 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 the own people. Right? And the next thing I want to talk about is that all these Spanish people that come in this country, I'm saying again that we supposed to have Spanish speaking people in the opposition and we need to go out there and start a campaign we need to educate these spanish people on what's going on that these people just want to use them for a time right and jack you're bringing all these spanish people and they want to take over this country maduro want to take over this country you want to take over uh uh, uh so does that make any sense what he's trying to do it doesn't make no sense. So we need to go out there and get our Spanish-speaking people to start our campaign. Thank you. This is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Happy birthday, Patricia. May you live to see many more years with good health. I'm playing some voice notes. Yeah, I got my chance, you know. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kadaki. What did I say? Well, again, these listeners, um, I'm just here just to say, uh, I don't know where the disrespect is coming from, but this is like beyond me to see, you know, Guyanese accepting all these stupidness and Then you look at other countries and stuff, even with Trinidad. When Trinidad first um, start digging like, for oil and stuff, they they actually had um, plans like to give um, single mothers and these things money and stuff. And we're saying down here like real slaves from the field, you know, not even the whole slaves. The ones in the field, we sit down and sit down, taking all this crap. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't understand because we have so much intelligent people in Guyana, but <laughs> blatant showing racism that they don't really want a certain race to, you know, hold all the, the key jobs like before or currently, kind of, we could say. So all these things, these people like 
doing to us and we are sitting you know taking it taking it taking it this is like we we don't even know we're looking so stupid accepting this because i saw this or we saw this playbook before with different countries doing it to africa and all these things that we still don't want to see these things and we still accepting all these things i like it comes to a point that you know you, you gotta play out to see you know like uh, you know people might vex you but you gotta just come completely come out and say like we're we're getting more stupid as the years go by because i think experience and time you know give you wisdom so all these experience and if you will look at Ghana history you see what these people are doing look at teachers this is, this is so disrespectful that's what you're doing to teachers public servants and, and and the thing about it is like so much things they're doing wrong is like and people still say they follow behind them you know it's like i don't understand so i just maybe i think like everybody gotta reach a, a point that they're really kind of buy anything in the market like fully fully can't buy anything in the market then to like open the eyes because if you look at uh, um venezuelan coming they're making them like you know they could sign up and become citizens i'm in a country here i don't know how much years and to get permanent you gotta pay tax <laughs> be over five years and you gotta get your documents every year put however you gotta put or whatever but make sure you have it for five years straight and pay your relative tax you know obey the law do all these things and people come to ghana and let's get in these things like just like that it's like it's me i don't know what more the, the people could do to us as Guyanese, and we could see that they mean no good because even look let's look at it even if they come out the next election the month the death Ghana yeah, gonna be with all the barring and the, these projects and roads and all these things it's like it kids still gonna gotta pay all of this money off. america import healthcare workers nurses canada england germany most of the all of the western countries import healthcare workers mostly nurses and now we are trying to import work healthcare workers nurses and pay them hundred forty thousand dollars a month do you think we could compete in that market for, for healthcare workers who do you think we're getting we get the people that are taking off the street corners they clean toilets and and and, and wherever and those are the people that get it from bangladesh to, to do to do healthcare as as nurses because they can't compete for people with, with, with the Western countries. The Western countries and nurses paid nothing less but than $2,000 a month. So how could we pay $700 US a month and get and get good qualified workers? It's a no-brainer. Hi, good morning, Mr. Amsterdam, and good morning to your listening audience. Good morning, Mr. Amsterdam, and your listening audience. Um, what I have to say, I don't have to listen to those people, you know, with a nonsensical statement. They were sent there, they, they are the devil, spawn of the devil. So you don't worry with them, let it distract you. However, um, people saying people attacking Martin and this and that, but we got to attack it because we need a leader to lead us. And if you use a very active leader, you're going to have active members, but if you, if you just lay back, we think people need people to push them sometimes. When you look in the, in the army, you have to get a leader to carry the soldier to do and just send the soldier out to talk to lead somebody, you have to lead them. So in other as we attacking him, we want him to be more active. Yes, we we know he going to Rooney, we, we going in this place and that place and whatever other places, but I have more important things where he's supposed to be. Because right now I have I was met on and he said he do not supporting um protests. I don't know through this. Somebody could just give me some light on it or correct me if I'm wrong. But there's the only thing the PPP understand is protests. When you protest, you get them unsettled, but when you just they're talking, talking, I don't care if you talk because talk is cheap. And if you notice Jack D you're just attacking everybody. Now we're coming up with Glenn Lark, kill someone. Why didn't he why didn't he open the case since Jack Glenn Lark did what he did? 
No, because Glenn Alex Posen is called over Yanni Nansen that is doing, he getting upset. Everybody that exposed me getting upset. Critics now, like he getting upset with critics. Mohammed, he getting upset with Mohammed. So this morning, like he either mad or we practicing madness. Now I think for the general election, as we rightfully said, we need a new voters list. We cannot, I should not go into the next general election with that corrupt list. If we should go into that, we would not make it. So my people, we got to start protesting the GCOM, we want a new list, a new list, not that list. We did a half house to house registration or something or the other. So um, we people got to be more vigilant and watch out for these people. Keep the eye focus on them. Because since you take your eye off, they're, they're gone with whoever belongs to you. So we got to stand firm and stand up to these people. And another thing we should not encourage no outsiders to come and live in our community. We should bar them out, run them out, let them find another place to go because yeah, I need us along with them to come in and take place and come and live and make people life uncomfortable. So we got to stand up and stand up for what belongs to us. Thank you for that voice note. Kadaki morning, sir, and to your viewers. And they can destroy this country. You were telling your brother, watch. They got to get Anil and Nalal, Jack Dio, present out. Them the tree. God's going to rig, rape the country. Black people are going to pierce, bro. Look, ain't no joke, fam. Watch. Them tree is the devil in disguise. I believe it's the only tree. Is your party if you ask me? Hmm. Hi, good morning, Kadaki. Don't worry with that idiot to come out here and say that you're speaking seriously. Right now, Ebor try to get his cell, cell out right in front of his nose. And if he got children, the children or try to get his cell out right in front of his nose. But he's so dunce that he can't even see it. So ignore people like them. They're going to wake up. They won't fart and wake them up. It's just a matter of time. It's like telling you truthfully, men in the motor ignore nobody. I tell you already, where I could go? I could go any place they could go. If it's got it's got up. Good morning, Kadaki. You know, Mr. Hines went to DC and he says, listen, we're not here for regime change. I do not see no other way out than Guyana having a regime change for his opposition to be in power. I do not know what else can they do with what Jack Joe is doing now. Bringing in all of these people, making them citizens. Then you have the Venezuelan also on the side. I think you guys better accept and ask for regime change. Because it would be that no matter how good the voters list may be now. You understand? Unless you guys go out there and prevent this from happening. And the masses always have the power. No, the masses should not be afraid of the government. The government should, should be afraid of the masses, of what the masses can do to bring them down. You guys are in serious trouble. I do not live in Guyana. I can care less. But my heart is hurting as to what is going on. People are sitting down there and just accepting what is going on there. You guys get to stand up now and do something very, very drastically. Bye. Thank you for your voice note. You know what's aggravating? These, I can't call them semi literate, they're fully illiterate. These illiterate, illiterate to call in to talk about done with the race thing and raise this and raise that and raise the other. They don't have an iota of common sense to recognize that the issues people are discussing are issues that will affect them and issues which affect this entire nation, whether you like it or not. 
if the indo guyanese believe that the ppp policies are good for them let it think again like somebody said um look out for rwanda and the likes i told you all the stories where i saw a youngster going to a supermarket and rob everybody that everybody except those who are black you think it's by mistake he has determined in his mind where the problem is and who can pay for it y'all have a good day goodbye enjoy your power